Hi ho guys and gals, here we are. We're working on the tiny house, aka you know what it is. It's <laughs> it's deer camp time. We're getting it all set up here with the mini split. We're running the AI Volt, uh, was it the 1000 I think? Yeah, it's doing the 220 to this thing. We got the heading inside. We're gonna show you the whole install. We're gonna tell you how to do it all. We're gonna get it all set up and then we're gonna test it and see how it goes. So let's check it out. All right, before we get too far into it, I wanna thank Pioneer for sponsoring this video and sending this over here for review and setup and the whole nine yards. Just to let you know, now this unit is their 24,000 BTU unit. It's insanely big and we overkill for what we're using it for, honestly. But if you're like, hey, I don't need that much or I need more, they've got other units. Let me scroll down here. So this one's coming in at $1,328, uh, $1,320. Uh, they've got a unit as small as a 9,000 BTU. It'll run on 110. They've got a 9,000 and a 12,000 BTU units that will run on 110. Then you jump up to the uh, the two, uh, 220s and you got 18,000, 24,000, 30,000, 36 thousand that's a lot of power remember these things will cool as well as heat during the winter that's the joy of, of a heat pump technology in this thing but let's jump into it show you how to how easy it is to install one of these things if you're if you're handy with any kind of diy kind of stuff you're going to have it's going to be a no-brainer real quick let me jump through what you're going to need to install this all right let me jump over to this screen so i can show you everything uh you're going to need uh, a power drill uh, a set of wrenches or pliers uh if you don't have those this might not be the project for you. So we're not gonna go into what drill you need because that's gonna depend on what you're trying to drill through. Uh, not only do you have to mount the, the items, but you also have to uh, cut a 2.5 to 3.5 inch hole through your wall uh, to uh, to run the, uh, the tubing for this. So if you're going through masonry and stuff like that, you're gonna need something more robust. If you're just cutting through like some basic sheet wood like we did, you don't, you're not gonna need much at all. Uh, one thing you're going to need, if you're going to change the length of the hose, and you can, you are going to need a, um, uh, a cutter and a flaring tool, something like this. I'm going to put links to all this down below. You're going to need a vacuum pump so you can prep the line. So when you change, any, it's already preloaded uh, with the coolant, uh, but uh, the line itself, when you're hooking up to the head unit, it's open to uh, to the air. So you're going to have to vacuum that out. As such, you're also going to need a, a manifold gauge like this, or you could just, oh, and also you're going to need a set of adapters to hook it up to the mini split. Now you could get something like this. Uh, I think honestly, this might be the best bet. You can get yourself a vacuum pump, the manifold, uh, and uh, your adapters and everything else you're probably going to need other than your basic hand Hand tools with this one uh, again if you don't go with the, the kit I do recommend getting some sort of uh, gasket sealant uh, just to be safe now the other thing you need is you're gonna need something to cut that hole with all right now this is just a basic one I could recommend uh, for for basic kind of walls if you're going through brick and uh, concrete so all that you're gonna need some masonry bits to go through that so this might not work for you all right all right that said let's jump into the install now the first decision you're gonna have to make is how you're gonna mount it. Now we're doing it a little bit differently here on a trailer, but you can put it on one of these like synthetic pads or a wall mount like this if you're doing it in a traditional home or apartment. Once you got your unit installed, you're gonna to want to remove the service covers here for for your manifold, there for your for your inlets, as well as for your your power lines, your AC uh, in and out. Now you're going to want to take the uh, the hoses that come with it, the tubing I should say, and you want to connect it to your head unit. At this point you're going to want to unroll it. Don't grab it by both ends and just stretch it out. You want to gently unroll this. This is copper tubing in here. You don't want to get a kinks and ruin this kind of thing, okay? So you want to be careful with this. But gently but firmly unroll it, connect it, and get it ready. You're going nice and straight there, or at least as straight-ish as you can get because you're going to have to feed it through the hole you're going to drill in the wall here. So you're not going to have it all curled up like this. Now the electrical is easier than you think. Don't get worried about this. Just connect the same colored wire to the number on the head unit as you do on the base unit. Now as far as connecting it to your home or other power, you may want to get an electrician for that. That might be a little bit more dangerous for some people. We're connected to a generator, so not as big an, an issue for us. Now comes the fun. You're going to set up and mount your mounting plate inside uh, your house or your apartment 
or your trailer, wherever you're doing this. Uh, yeah, you can set this up, put it up on the, where you want on the wall, take a pencil, mark where you're going to drill these if you want. Of course, we didn't have the issue with, you know, not seeing what's behind the wall and stuff like that. We could see it right there. So you could just set it up and drill right in place and mount this. Now you're going to want to drill the hole that your, your hoses are going to go through here. Uh, remember, use it. it's going to be two and a half to three and a half inches depending on the unit. Check your instructions to make sure what size you need. And then it's just a simple case of passing them through. Now you're going to want to use, uh, you know, they've got a protective sleeve that goes in there, helps protect it from, from ripping that uh, the covering over that. So make sure you use that here. Like, since we're just using sheet wood here, there's no really a, a situation where you could uh, to install something like that. Then once you're all set, it's just a matter of connecting the head unit to the base unit. You got the two hoses there to connect. Again, it's pretty easy. It's hard to get the wrong ones on it because you got a large size, you got a small size, and you just it's just a little bit of wrenching here. Make sure to use a sealant on it. Uh, make sure you don't get any leaks, anything like that. We, again, be careful when moving these, these ho uh, hoses around. Uh, I keep calling them hoses. They're copper tubing. We don't want any of the kinks. We don't want to ruin anything. This is also the part where if you were going to shorten the length of tubing, you'd want to do that. And uh, we're going to talk about the tools and stuff that you would need to do that. But we didn't here because we might be moving this later. This is just kind of a test set up to see, hey, does this work for us? And, and you know, honestly, just having a little fun out here, see what we can do when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the hunting season this fall. Now, as far as charging the lines, unfortunately, we got to go to the slideshow here because I had a buddy who came out who, who had the manifold. He does some HVAC stuff. He's a little bit of a squirrel nut zipper and did not want to be on camera. I, I, you know, I get some people don't don't like that sort of thing. So we're going to step through it here and show you step by step how to connect and charge the lines. So first of all, let me make sure we're over here on the right one. So this is your manifold right here. And what you're going to see is the top one is going to be your small or your liquid side. Then the bottom one is going to be your large gas side and one's smaller than the other one. So it's pretty easy to figure out which is which. Then you're going to have two caps on the end. Now this covers the, uh, the, the valves that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. Uh, and then you've got the service valve down on the bottom, on the larger gas side on the back side of it. This is the valve, all right? Then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take your manifold, that's this item right here, and you're going to connect the blue side to the service port. That's the one I just showed you that's on the back side of the large uh, manifold. And then you're going to take the yellow side and you're going to connect it to your, your vacuum pump. You are not going to connect the red side to anything. What you're going to do is you're going to connect this, you're going to open up the, the blue side, and you're going to run your vacuum pump until you get to, uh, I ran it for 15 minutes, as I think was what we recommend. Uh, we ran it for half an hour just to be safe. Then once you run it for half an hour, you're going to turn the vacuum pump off, you're going to close that valve, the blue side, all right, and you're going to let it sit for, I would, I would say do it for at least half an hour, maybe an hour, and you're going to come back and double check it and make sure you've got the same level and you haven't lost, you know, or gained any pressure as it were. Uh, and that's going to tell you that, that you got good seals on, on everything and that you're good to go. Okay, at that point, you're going to remove these dust caps, both of them, and inside there's a little hex, uh, uh, you know, uh, nut in there, and you're going to take the Allen wrench that comes with it, and you're going to put it in there, and you're going to open them up. There's going to be some resistance at first, and then you're going to get to where it spins fairly freely, and then you're going to get to where there's resistance again. Don't go past that. You're going to get to that so it's nice and snug, but you don't want to grind it all the way out, okay? You don't want to just totally wrench on it. You can do that to both of these. And I would say kind of do it slow at first on the top one. Let it let it adjust, you know, nice and evenly. And the second one, you just, you know, you just open it up again. Again, not past the point where you get the, the second set of resistance there, all right? And at which point you now have the lines fully charged and you're ready to go at that point, okay? At this point, you can disconnect the, the blue line. There's going to be a little bit of hiss for a little bit of release, at which point you're going to cap everything, maybe use a little bit of sealant on it. Some people use sealant on the dust caps. I think that might be a little bit of overkill, but you do what you do want to do there. And at that point, you're set. You've got now fully charged lines, everything's connected, and you're ready to start using the system. All right, let's see if this will work. We got start and stop.
damn, that's convenient. Someone's excited. Look at that. Yep, hop up in there, see if we got some air coming out. Oh yeah, we got air. Cold air? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that feels nice. It looks good up there. Yeah, once I insulate this thing, it'll be all right. Heat, change the temperature. First thing. Give a second. Smell heat. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's hotter. Well, there you've seen the setup and see how cool it is. Of course, this was in our, our tiny house or, or, or for a deer camp there. Uh, but this would work just the same in any home or apartment or anything like this. You can, I've seen people who set these up in RVs, real popular down there in Vegas, because you get a lot more efficient cooling than you are from the standard AC units, even the ones that they build into to the RV systems. This is the great thing about these is, first of all, they, um, this is their Pioneer Quantum Series inverter. And the inverter tech means that it's going to adjust the amount of power it uses based on how hard it's working. Most AC systems are basically binary. They're either on or they're off and there's no in between. With that inverter tech, it can dial it up or dial it down. And that means cash back in your pocket. And that's important, at least for, for me and my family it is. Uh, it's got an eco mode, so it's not gonna run again. It's gonna know how much it needs to run. That's gonna save money as well. Uh, it's Energy Star Service. Certified. It has the follow me mode. I don't know if I mentioned that before, where basically if you've got the remote in your hand and you walk around, it knows what the temperature is, where you are, and adjusts based on where you are and what you need. That's pretty cool. Uh, they have a DIY friendly warranty. A lot of these companies, you got to be careful because if you do the install yourself, they're going to be like, ah, you voided the warranty. Not with Pioneer. They know what's going on. They built this for you to install yourself, and the warranty is, is there to, to show just that. Uh, it's got durable performance. It has an auto reverse dust cleaning mode that backs everything up and blows everything out. You now still you probably should go around once a year and do it just anyway, but uh, you know maybe take a blower or something to it just to be safe. But I mean that's some nice peace of mind knowing that that's built in. It's got insect and rodent prevention, which is good for us <laughs> where we are. We got lots of critters out there. We got, even got some rattlers and. Boy, you don't want something like that crawling up in there. Uh, auto heating for cold weather. Uh, the, the 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 auto heating that that's really important. Okay, uh, the fact that when it gets colder, this thing is going to uh, control its own thermal balance and everything else. And again, that heat pump. This is really important, I think, because a lot of people overlook it. They look at these units like, hey, this is just something I'm gonna use in summer, and after that, it's out of sight, out of, out of mind. There's very few ways to efficiently heat your house as well as a heat pump, and I think that's something that more, more people need to take a look into. Um, anyway, I'm really excited about using this thing. Uh, we got, uh, was it archery season starts, uh, I, I think the first week is September and then open season goes into October. So we're super excited about getting there out there and using this. Now we did not trim down the pipes on this because again, it's way overkill for what we're doing. And uh, we wanted to check it out, see how it works. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll leave it on there. Maybe we'll move it somewhere else next year. But anyway, thanks for checking this out. Thanks again for Pioneer for sponsoring this video. We got links to everything down below. Be sure to check them out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, Shine on.